beautiful. everybody let's stand and worship our wonderful lord this morning with crown him with many crowns sorry all hail the power of jesus name Invite for you to be seated. Oh gosh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kevin. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Let's show some appreciation to our past to Pastor Kevin. You may be seated. Uh, a few words before you continue. Surprise, by the way. Yeah, well, you could tell that I was. I was like, like wait a minute. What, what is all this that he's doing in the background there? What is all that? You oh, here it hymn. comes. Yeah, I, I knew the end of the hymn, and it was not that. So, yes. <laughs> well, on behalf of the church, I just want to say thank you for your life. First Thessalonians 5.12 tells us that we should honor and respect those that work among us and admonish us, and that's what you do. We appreciate your leadership, your support. But most importantly for me and for us, it's your friendship. So thank you, brother. Thank you, um, I would ask you, we have a little something for you. So here you go. Happy birthday. Um, I thought about the use that you're part Italian. So there's a little Italian there for you. And a few weeks ago, probably months ago, you said something about a game that you never received. So there's a little something there for you. Am I to be opening this now? Um, why not? Sure. Okay. All right. I'm a little nervous, y'all. <laughs> and if you pay attention to his sermons, like we you all can do, tell he listens. He never got. The I finally hungry got hippos. hungry, hungry hippos so he for my finally birthday. Finally got the hungry hippos. You see, God is good, right? God is good. This is In one of his sermons, he said, "I never had hungry hippos. I always wanted it." And I thought to myself, "This would be a great gift." So at. Uh, However old you are, happy birthday, brother. I had to wait like 35 years <laughs> to get this thing. And no, I'm not 35. But 
<laughs> and uh, there's a little something for the uh, Italian in you. Okay. Hope you enjoy. So okay. uh, God bless you. If you could do me a big favor, just stretch out your hands. We're going to pray for Pastor Kevin. And just in form of unity, just say thank you to God for his life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Pastor Kevin, for his life, Father, for uh, his preachings, for his example, Lord, but above all, his relationship with you, which is, is truly an example to each and every one of us of how to live, Father. I, I pray for his life, for his family, for his marriage uh, with Kelly, Father, for his children. Thank you so much for the whole entire family. I know he represents a family as well, and be with, with them as well. Thank you for this time that we get to celebrate. And like your word says, we honor and respect those that are admonishing us, encouraging us, uh, praying for us. So thank you for Pastor Kevin. Bless him in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. People said amen. 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 Pastor. amen. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Thank you, brother. All right. I'm going to give this to where it needs to go, which is my kids. Uh, <laughs> their eyes light up. <gasps> oh, goodness. Okay, yeah, I genuinely was surprised by that. So thank you. Well done. Um, good job. Okay, now where, where, where are we? <laughs> We are back to, welcome to worship. You all didn't just come to a birthday party. That's not what's happening here today. Uh, I guess that's happening as well. But we are going to lift up, not the name of Kevin, but the name of Jesus above every name. And that's what we want to do. Uh, we do have a number of announcements. And so just hang tight for a minute. We're going to try and go through them quickly. But they are important and exciting ones as well. Uh, the first one is that our United Methodist women are hosting a diaper and mask drive for Rosa Valdez Early Childhood Learning Center if you remember, about three months ago, we had the director of Cornerstone Family Ministries come and share and give a testimony here. It's one of the ministries of that, of, of that organization, and so uh, we're looking to do that drive, and we've already been collecting, but we're doing that, I think, through Friday, uh, and you can go another week, at least another week, so another week and a half or so, uh, and you can put those in the breezeway. You can come and bring them at any time, uh, diapers and masks. Oh, okay. Very good. The uh, second announcement is uh, we're doing a couple different drives. That, the diaper and mask drive is one. Uh, Pineview Elementary is uh, trying to keep their teachers encouraged for the last uh, month, and so they are doing an escape room. In other words, I'm with my students, and now we need to go escape. Uh, and the way that we do that is they're going to be providing different things, and we said that we would provide some candy. So... Uh, just a little chocolate break in the middle of the day, knowing I was a teacher, my wife is, there's many teachers amongst us, it, it, it matters, it helps. So uh, just get a couple of those bags of, uh, that, you, that you get for Halloween, those kind of individually wrapped candies, and just bring them here to service the next uh, couple weeks, and we will distribute those to those teachers. And just so you're aware, we really have made it a priority, knowing how many teachers are amongst us, uh, that we just, we love our teachers, and we want them to know that we know it's been a difficult year, and we want to support them. Uh, just this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, we're going to be providing a lunch for Orlando Lakes High School teachers. Um, we've been sending encouraging notes, and some of you all have been part of that ministry as well, and we're looking to expand that uh, into next year. So just so you know, we are really reaching, uh, trying to be impactful into our schools in that way. Uh, our church is also hosting a virtual Pampered Chef party. Some of you all are already participating in that. It's been on Facebook. If you're like me, it's, you're getting dinged on your Facebook all the time for this. It is uh, something that's going on right now as we speak, and it's going to be going for the next week or so, I think through Wednesday, I want to say. And um, if you're not familiar with Pampered Chef, it's really, really good quality cooking and, and food products. You see the yummy food uh, that's prepared behind us, um, and all of the fundraising is going to our music ministry, and everything that is uh, everything that is donated is going to be matched by an anonymous donor, and so it really is an opportunity for us uh, to take advantage of that and somebody's generosity. So, thank you to the donor for that for sure. I have uh, one, I have two more announcements. One is not my own. And the second to last one is that last week we had Bob Swan up here, and we had his, I don't know, is it a swan song? Uh, we had his, <laughs> we had, <laughs> and uh, some of you all have been asking, and you probably already know, that we have, uh, who's his replacement going to be? I'm like, well, one, there's no replacing Bob. 
However, we are pretty darn excited about the individual who we have um, filling that role and that place of facility directors, and here he is. <laughs> Travis White. So, you see, he, he, he's already got, he's pulling it off already. <laughs> he's, he's got the shorts, and yeah, and obviously the suspenders, he's got the drill. He's not quite Bob the Builder, but he's pretty awesome in his, it's, it's good to home grow, grow these things. Should I dare hand you a microphone? <laughs> he's like, no, no, no. Soon enough, what you all don't know, especially at home, is that he's been sitting in that booth for over a year manning our, uh, our sound and making everybody else sound good up here, and we're just <laughs> grateful for that. And Travis brings a level of expertise uh, that is phenomenal, and he's obviously meshing right in with the rest of the staff. Uh, Becky's on staff and has been here, obviously part of this church. You guys have been here for like 20-something years, really. She has, and you guys have been kind of together and part of this. And so we're excited to have you, and uh, welcome aboard. Thank yeah, you. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, we do have one more announcement, and I am going to invite my friend and uh, our leadership chairperson and uh, staff parish relations chairperson, Diane Kunzel, if she would come forward, and I'm going to hand her this microphone, and I'll step to the side as well. Um, I would like you to know that today is an important day in the Methodist Church. It's what we call Announcement Sunday. And it's the day when we learn whether or not our pastor will be staying with us for another year or moving on to another congregation. And I am very happy to announce that the Florida Conference has decided and Pastor Kevin has agreed that he will remain with us for another year. <laughs> Pastor Kevin is uh, the best example of a good shepherd that I have ever known. He is a true and talented man of God, and we are really blessed to have him. Let's give him another round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. And I this is one thing that a, a true shepherd would absolutely hate this day because it's, it's not about me. Hear that as news about you. And that this, when I received this appointment a uh, little under two years ago, I was excited to come. Uh, I've been part of Land Lakes before. My family had been here. And we knew uh, upon meeting you all what a loving congregation you are and the opportunity that we have here in this, uh, in this community. Uh, those things still remain to be true, and we desire to be here, and the best is yet to come. I know it's been a rough go of it. I certainly did not expect a global pandemic uh, to have to navigate that amongst other health uh, uh, things going on, but uh, excited to be here. And so uh, it's with that that I just want to say thank you, and uh, if you'd bow your heads and hearts as we open up in prayer. Father, we give you thanks. I give you thanks, Lord, personally for this congregation, for this staff, for this leadership team and what a blessing it is we know lord that there have been hurdles there have been struggles um, but we trust lord that whether it's by your hand or not we're going to trust that it's uh it's discipling us it's growing us more in your likeness and it's preparing us this year lord has prepared us for what is yet to come and we know god you have good things in store for this church uh, many churches lord in this time have 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 fallen Many churches and many pastors have left the pastorate, but we are standing firm. We are holding firm to your word, and we are, you are the rock for us. And so, God, we just give you thanks for the opportunity to continue to be able to serve and to lift up the name Jesus above every name. And all God's people said, amen. 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 I invite you to stand as we worship, praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
Come to the well that never once dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all ye sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. is waiting there with open arms. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. The power of hell forever God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever the power of hell forever defeated now it is well I'm walking in freedom for God so loved so love the world. Amen. It says, bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. God so loved the to our Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And it is up to us to say, yes, Lord, I will. I will praise you in my life. I will worship you in my life. In my daily walk, you will be my Lord and Savior. fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out working all things out yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes I will Bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy in all my days. Yes, I will.
Sing, we choose to praise. That's what's sticking in my head now. Because oftentimes, if you're like me, I don't, I don't feel like it. And God's like, I didn't ask you what you felt like. <laughs> Will you choose to do this? It's an active thought process that we do sometimes what we don't feel like. Um, I know David just invited you to sit down. I'm going to invite you to stand back up because we are going to affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed and we want to stand on this. We don't want to just say it. We want to proclaim this truth and believe it wholeheartedly for ourselves and own this. So the words are on the screen for us. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I, I invite you to be seated. I will mention that we have actually changed our, our software as well with our, our PowerPoint, and so much thanks goes to Mitchell and Brenda and team uh, for it, because a, it's a lot of moving parts and a lot of change. You've got to learn this new software, and so we're grateful. Hopefully, it's going well for everybody at, at home, and I have a thumbs up for Mitchell, who's obviously watching what's happening at home as well. Uh, a few prayer requests uh, from from each of you throughout the week or from, from us, the, the church, throughout the week. Um, I, I think I see, I see Kurt Stern back there. I don't see Gene. But Gene's sister, uh, Wendy, uh, who has also been fighting cancer, has also now been struggling with pneumonia as well. And um, I know that she had a kind of a rough patch for a while, and I got an update of an email of that she's, she's doing much better uh, and that uh, upon seeing, I think it was a, I don't know if it was a CT scan, I believe it was, that actually showed that her tumor that she had is actually shrinking as a result as well uh, from the chemo that, that she's going through. And so praise God for that, but prayers continue for Wendy. Uh, prayers continue for Judy Helms, who is still uh, recovering from her surgery as well. Uh, Judy, I, I know that she and G uh, Jean are, are watching, and so uh, we are with you. Uh, in prayer, to be sure. Um, we also want to lift up, uh, last week I was praying for a friend of ours, uh, Randy, uh, who's been a family friend. Uh, I've known Randy, I was thinking about it obviously this past week, I've known Randy as long as I've known the Kilbrides, as long as I've known my family, I've known Randy to be like family, like an extension of family, and even more so for uh, my mother and father-in-law, who are lifelong friends uh, with Randy, who went to be with the Lord um, this past week, um, really did not believe that that was going to be the case. Um, but I am reminded that sometimes when we pray for total victory, and when we, when we pray for perfect healing, 
I don't know what perfect healing looks like, but I have to trust that the Lord does. I also have to trust that the word that was proclaimed last week in saying that to live is Christ and to die is gain is also true. And so I know that Randy, I know we know where Randy is, and we know that as a worship leader, he is worshiping with us as well in a way that we don't even understand. And so I just want to lift up all those prayers and praises and the ones that are remaining on your heart as well. Would you pray with me? Father, we give you thanks, and as I, as I quiet myself and hear the rains that are, are coming down on the roof, Lord, um, we trust that your Holy Spirit is raining down on us as well. And God, that you are present in this place. You are present in the victorious moments. You are present in the painful moments, in the, in the moments of sorrow, and the po- moments that we don't understand. The praises that we lift up, the prayers that we go, I, I don't get it, Lord. I thought you were going to answer this prayer, and you answer it according to your will. And ultimately, Lord, death is not your plan. But yet, God, you redeem it, and that, God, you are the God of resurrection and new life and new birth and eternal life. And so, God, we trust that. We trust your word, even when it's hard. And we give you thanks for who you are and who you call us to be. And we pray this in Jesus' name. We pray it unified in Christ, as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In Ezra, in the book of Ezra, chapter 3, 11, it states that the people of God were responding to God's goodness. And the verse goes that they sang and they praised and they give thanks to God for what he has done. For, his, for he is good and his mercies endures forever. The interesting thing about this verse and this story is that they were coming out of captivity from Babylon. And they were trying to build a temple. And they were giving thanks to God just because the foundation was set. The building wasn't, wasn't completed. The foundation was set. It got me thinking a lot of times in my life, maybe not everything goes according to what David thinks is right or what's good. But one thing's for sure, God is good. Amen? Sometimes we don't understand why, the why, the reason for it. But we know the who. Who? And the who is our foundation, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that his word says will never, ever leave us. So think about that for a second. As we say the goodness of God, he's good regardless of whether our, where, where our situation is at. He is good forevermore because his word says on so his word is truth. Amen. of the goodness of God. 
Gabby and, and 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 Robbie and David, David and David. <laughs> Robbie, who's uh, just stepping away right now, the first time that he helped us with drums was, or the last time was over a year ago, and he had just become a father, and so now he has a he has a one year old, I believe, at home, and uh, we're excited for him. He was. He was rehearsing on Wednesday up here, and he, he had a hat that said, I think, World's Greatest Dad on it, and uh, it's, I love it. I love to see that in, in dads and whatnot. Grateful for him. Okay, church, so we are in week three of a six-week series called First Love. Uh, you see that you're coming to the classroom today, uh, clearly. Um, we said that uh, in the craziness of this world, uh, maybe over the last year, 14 months, that you might have gotten into some bad habits. Uh, some of you have told me that you've actually gotten into some good habits because of this, and that's great. Um, but maybe our priorities have gotten kind of mixed up during this time, and we need to level set is kind of the, way, the language that we've been using. Uh, we need to realign ourselves to an active faith because we've been very inactive uh, people have been calling it the COVID-15, right? You know, you put on a little bit extra, and it's not just weight of our body, but weight in our faith, and that we kind of take on some extra garbage and junk food and whatnot. And so we want to follow Christ, who is our first love. 
And so over the last two weeks, we've looked at the Apostle Paul's letter to the Philippians, and we want to memorize something, and we want to kind of uh, consume it and make it part of who we are, and that is these little cards here. Hopefully you received one of these cards, and I'm going to do my best not to mess it up too, because I'm speaking into a microphone. I'm a little nervous about that, because I've been practicing this a lot. And maybe you all have two in front of the mirror or in the car or whatnot. You'll notice that we have the verse, it's Philippians 3, 10 through 11, but we don't, um, there's, no, there's no cheating this time. So are we ready to do this, church? Because we're trying to memorize these two verses, not just to pass a test and to get a sticker. I'm not handing out stickers. Uh, there's no candy I'm throwing out there. This is for us so that we can truly allow it to be part of who we are. So are we ready? Y'all are not very confident, are you? Okay, if you have your cards, if you have your Bibles, if you need to cheat, it's okay, it's okay. It's Philippians 3, 10 through 11. It starts, I want to know Christ. All right, we'll just say it. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, of his sufferings, by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Okay, okay, not too bad. We still got a few more weeks to work on it. I heard some very confident in it, some less confident in it. Let's say it together. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Good, good. All right, so we have a few more weeks to work on that. We're going to allow that to be part of us. I want to know Christ, yes. I want to know the power of his resurrection. Heck yes. I mean, we really, we really want that. I want to know the sharing of his sufferings. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> wait, what are we signing up for? What did I just say? What did I just profess? I don't know if we like that part. We don't usually say the sufferings of Christ, though. If you, are, if you have Catholic roots like me, you don't call it the suffering. You call it the, you guys know what it is? The passion, right? The passion of Christ. And uh, the, the reason why we call it the passion is because the Latin word for sufferings is patior. Now, that's, I, don't, I know like five words in Latin, and they're all religious language, right? Uh, but patior translated into English is passion. All right, so it is the passion of Christ. Either way, it's the suffering of Christ, it's the passion of Christ. So I want to know Christ, I want to know the power of his resurrection, and I want to know the sharing of his passion. We want to share in the passion of Jesus. That sounds so much nicer than suffering, doesn't it? It's one and the same, though. So week one, we talked about how we need to change our perspective, the way that we see things, the way that we look things, our worldview, our biblical worldview. Um, last week we talked about having a priority and that priority being our first love in Christ. And this week we're continuing on with the P theme. You hear the, the P there in perspective and priority and this week it is passion. Um, it's all about joining Jesus in his passion. And again, church, we're, we're not playing around with this. We're trying to really, the goal is to level set. Um, I know over the last year we've taken some hits and it has been a difficult time for many of us in this. We've developed these bad habits and we want to get back to a place of healthy habits in our faith walk. And so we've been reading Paul's words to the Philippians, um, but before we get to the passage that we're going to read today in Philippians 2, I want to just read something, a few ideas that Paul had shared to the church in Rome. He writes this letter to Rome and I want you to be able to just kind of like internally raise your hand to understand if you can identify with what he's saying. Because Paul, as he's writing this, is frustrated with his own unhealthy habits. He's frustrated that there's a way that he wants to live and he just f feels like he just can't do it. Um, that there is a sin within him that is not of him, but the world kind of has attached this to him and he's trying to rip it out of him and he feels like he can't do this. And so he says in Romans 7, 15, he says, I don't know what I'm doing. Because I don't do what I want to do. Instead, I do the thing that I hate. Yes, I can, I can relate to this, right? Um, and he goes on to say this. He says, the desire to do good is inside of me, but I can't do it. I don't do the good I want to do, but I do the evil that I don't want to do. I mean, you can hear his frustration in this language. And this is, for me, as a new believer reading this, it's kind of like the Psalms. When you read the Psalms, and you're like, yes, David, 
I, you're like yelling at God. I guess that's okay. Good, because I am too. Here he's yelling at himself and frustrating. This is essentially biblical kicking yourself. And this is what he's doing. He's like, oh, gosh, I'm so frustrated with myself. Um, and you may experience this in many areas of your life. You know, maybe it, it might be you want to be a good steward of your finances. You want to save up money. You want to spend uh, well um, but you just don't. You keep buying things that you don't need to impress people you don't even like. Right? That's, that's the old joke. Um, maybe that's, that's where you're at. Maybe you want a better relationship. Maybe it's in your marriage. You want a better relationship. You know it's going to take some work. And you, you think, I, I'm willing to do the work, but you don't do the work. Some of us find ourselves there. Some of us find ourselves that we want to take next steps in our faith, and we just know that if we just take on some new disciplines, gosh, if I could just read scripture every day, if I could just spend some quiet time in prayer, if I could just find some way to serve outside of myself, if I just did these disciplines, I know that it would change things, but you don't find yourself very disciplined in your disciplines, right? Hence, the, there's some methodical ways of doing this. Hello, we're Methodists. We have to be methodical. We believe that doing methodical things leads to victorious life in new ways of doing things. And so what Paul is talking about in Rome is that there's actual sin in his life that he's trying to quit doing. And he wants to live differently, but he says, I have to create a new pattern of living. My pattern of living has to change. Um, th th I have to level set. And so later on in this, ro this letter to the Romans, Paul says, the only way to change the way that I am living, the only way that you can change the way that you are living is to is to do this. And he says this in Romans 12 too, and you all know this verse well, probably. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I mean, isn't that what we want? I mean, as a, as a pastor, perhaps I get nothing more, no greater question, no bigger question, a more common question is, how do I know the will of God? And my question back to them is, do you know Christ? You can't know the will of God without knowing Christ. That's the first step anyways, is to know Christ. Fortunately for everybody here, we have, we have said that. The first thing that we said is, I want to know Christ. That's why this is so transformative. It all starts here. This is the beginning. If you go, I don't want to know Christ, and this is the question that we were asking our confirmands early on. We had a 10-week process with them, and we said, do you want to know Christ? And if you said, no, I don't want to know Christ, I was like, okay, well, I guess we can go. If you want to know Christ, you can know Christ. And so that's the first part of this, of knowing God's will. That's why we're here, right? And whether you know Christ intimately and know him well, and you're like, Kevin, I've been a cradle Christian, I've known, uh, Jesus and I are like this, you still want to know him more, right? You still want to know him greater. And some of us, maybe those who are viewing online, or maybe somebody here, um, are, just know of Christ. We just know of Christ. And so in order to know what God's will is, we have to change the pattern of our life to go from the pattern of this world by renewing our mind. So it begs the question of what's the pattern of this world? The pattern of this world is to think about ourselves. The pattern of this world is to be self-focused. It's to look out for yourself. It's to highlight yourself, which is why I absolutely hated y'all singing happy birthday for me. And right after that, you know, Denise, uh, 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 we, you know, we're, we're, we're coming up here and we're, it's all about Kevin today. And I, I absolutely hate that because I know I'm preaching this message about other, being other focused. And so um, hear my heart when I'm trying to be other focused on this. Um, we, because the patterns of this world is elevating yourself as much as you can. And if you have to step on the backs of others to get there, that's what you do. That's the pattern of this world. And Paul says to the church in Philippi, not so with you. You're going to live differently. You're going to look different in this world because you're not going to do those things that the rest of the world does. And, uh, and so, if you have your Bibles with you, we're looking at Philippians 2, and we're just kind of going through it slowly. Some of you all are doing this daily devotional, and we're going through it very slowly. We're in chapter 2 of a four-chapter letter, and we're looking at verses 2 through 4. Uh, one through four, just to kind of start off here. Paul says these words, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, 
If any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. And so, church, for the most part, for most of us, this last year has been scary. Like, it's been scary. And there's a lot of unknowns. Um, you're tired, perhaps. You're frustrated. And what happens when you are tired and scared and frustrating? You're backed into a corner. And when you're backed into a corner, you end up kind of nipping at people. You bite at people. And you look out for me. I just have to look out for me if I'm tired and I'm frustrated. Uh, some of us do that when we're hungry, right? You get hangry. But it, whatever it is for you, that, that is what the world patterns us into is that. And I feel like we've witnessed this um, in the world over this time, that we have not valued others above ourselves. Uh, we've, we've said, I'm looking to my own interests. I've said, it's what I want. What I want matters more than what others want. It's the pattern of this world. But church, we are the ecclesia, is what we are called scripturally. That's the Greek word for church. We are the church. We are the called out ones, which means that we are part of the seven and a half billion people in the world, but we are called out from living the way that the world would say that we are to live. We're called out. We don't separate ourselves, right? We're not just like off away from the rest of the world, but we are out of the world, that we live differently. We have a different pattern. We have a different mindset. And the mindset that we take on is the mindset of Jesus. And so we keep reading in Philippians 2, 5 through 11, uh, a text that is widely understood as an ancient hymn. This is probably the oldest song that we know of the New Testament church, maybe even probably previous to that. Um, uh, I mean, just very, very early church there. And so let me read uh, verses 5 through 11. In your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking on the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I was challenging David that he needs to write a song. If that's a hymn, then we need to write a song on that, because I have not heard one, at least not a good one. But um, <laughs> So do not, this is what he's talking about with this new pattern. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is what he's talking about, because this is not only a hymn, but it's a pattern for us to follow Jesus. Now, there's not, there's sometimes, obviously, we all want to be miracle workers. We want to be Jesus in so many ways, but Jesus follows, gives us a path here. He gives us a a pattern for us to view. And I've read this text before, and I've brought out the whiteboard with this before, and you're like, oh my gosh, Kevin's going to do this again. Yes, it's the same reason why we sing a lyric 47 times, is because we need to hear it that many times, because we're not, we have not mastered it yet. We're not there yet, church. I'm speaking for myself, but I can, I'm, I'm, I'm admonishing the church, as that was the, da the word David used uh, in describing me. This is admonishing. And so look at this. You guys have seen this before. Right? I'm just going through the verse. I'm sorry for those who have to put my back to you. I need to like move this out of the way over here. There you go. We'll do that. Okay, so in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not, I'm going downward, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. You see the downward trajectory there. Therefore, right? You always got to know what the therefore is there for. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest 
exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. In heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue, acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the God, the glory of the Father. There you are. You have the V pattern there. Now, I could have drawn that ahead of time, but I want you to see that I'm going along with Scripture. I'm just reading it along with this, right? And he says, he says this. It's a V pattern. This is the mind of Christ. You say, I want to know Christ. This is Christ. This is the pattern of Christ. Um, we say we want to, there's the pattern of the world, and then there's the pattern of Christ. Jesus, who is God, did not believe that his being God should be something that should be taken advantage of. Can I take advantage of that? There's one uh, translation that says he didn't think that being God, he should exploit that. Um, the, probably the best translation is this. The most accurate translation is it uses the word grasped. He didn't think that his being God was something that could be grasped. Now, where in the Bible do you see somebody grasping? The very beginning, right? You know the story. Adam and Eve grasping the fruit from the tree. And so here's what you see. Whereas Adam and Eve believed that equality with God was something to be grasped. It's something that I can grasp. I can be like God. You know the story, right? The serpent in the garden says, oh, you, you take from that fruit. It's okay. You're going to be like God. But you remember, they were created in the image of God, but that wasn't good enough. They wanted to replace God. They wanted to be God. And so they grasped for that. They wanted to be God. And so here we are. We turned it upside down. Pattern of Christ. Pattern of Jesus, pattern of Adam. This is the pattern of Adam. This is the pattern of the world. Now, it, we know that the story, Adam and Eve, right? We know the beginning of the story, and that's not where it ends, though. That's not where it ends. Really, this is called the fall of man. Fall of man begins right here, and you have Adam and Eve, and then what do you have? We have their children. Boy, it didn't take long. To, to things to go sour for them, right? You have Cain who kills Abel. The fall just keeps going down. I know it's going up, but the, this is called the fall. You have Cain and Abel. Then you have the story of Noah, which basically there's not a soul in the world left that is righteous or good or holy. Everybody's bad. And then you finally get to this story of the tower of Babel, right, in Genesis chapter 11. And you have the tower up here, and they say, we're going to build this tower up here. Why are they going to build the tower? Is it going to be like a church where they're like, man, we're just so excited for the name above all names that we're going to build a tower to proclaim the name of God? No, it says this. It says, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Oh, man, making a name for ourselves rather than for God, again, they are created, all created in the image of God, all been told that they are value, valuable and priceless, right? They, but they go after equality with God. They're looking to make a name for themselves. Look what happens with Jesus. All right, I'm flipping it again. Different pattern. This is Jesus. This is the pattern of Jesus. It's flipped upside down. Jesus is given the name above every name. It's given to him. He's earned it. He doesn't have to take it. He doesn't have to steal it. He doesn't have to rob it. It's given to him. It is his. They are making a name for themselves. Jesus has given a name. Right? In the Tower of Babel, all right, here we go. Tower of Babel, it, people are scattered at the top. Right? Their, their language is confused. And there's not a whole lot of room at the top. If anybody's ever climbed a mountain, there's not a whole lot of room up there. You can't say, come one, come all. It's, it's very limited. It's one, it's one person, Jesus, supposed to be up here. But we're trying to duke it out and play king of the hill up here with each other. And it ends up, people get scattered. God says, this is not going to work. You're going to end up being scattered. Jesus, who's given the name above every name, we have this pattern, and... What does it say? The name upon which every knee will bow. Every knee is bowed and there's, there's endless people are allowed and invited at the foot of the cross. 
everyone's invited. Doesn't matter what you do, doesn't matter what you did, doesn't matter what you said, everyone's invited and everyone can kneel at the name of Jesus. Right at the Tower of Babel, God confuses their language. Tongues are now speaking different languages. Here, every tongue will confess Jesus Christ is Lord. So you see these reversals here. You see how everything is on, on its head. Um, they're going to be in a million different languages, but every tongue is going to confess Jesus Christ is Lord. I mean, it is, this is humility. This is the path of humility. The path of pride. This is the pattern of man. This is the pattern of God, trying to glorify God. This is the mind of Christ. This is the mind of Adam. What mindset are we going to take on? Other-minded or self-minded? Are we going to be focused on ourselves or focused on others? That is the pattern we want to take. Church, we will never be an effective witness for Christ to the world if we continue to operate in our own self-interest. And you can receive this individually, or you can receive it in the, you know, I'll bring up my Italian again. My, this is for yous, right? This, this really is for the church. So you can receive it personally. Man, I need to stop being selfish. We need to, and I put myself in that too. We need to, because otherwise the world is like, pff, you're like the rest of the world. Same pattern, different name, same pattern. We will not fulfill our mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of this world unless we put aside our own self-interest. This is how we join Jesus in the sufferings. When we say, I want to I want to know the sufferings of Christ, I want to know the passion of Christ, this is how we do it. We choose this. Don't be mixed up to say, oh, poor Jesus, right? Poor Jesus that he, he, had to, he chose it. It's an important thing. Like we said, we choose to worship, we choose to love because we don't feel like it. Guess what? Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus didn't feel like it, and he chose it. He said, yes, I will do this. It didn't happen to him. His sufferings didn't happen to him. He could have taken himself off the cross. He could have claimed it right there, but he knew a different victory was coming, an eternal victory. Verse 7 says, he made himself nothing, but the, the, the word in Greek is kenosis, and it means that he renounced his divinity. He says, I'm not God right now. I'm not going to be God. I just turn, that, I turn God off right now because I'm not going to choose that. I'm going to choose the cross. I'm going to choose suffering. And he emptied himself. He suffered. He had everything, and he chose nothing for us. And to be clear, again, he's, he chooses to rid himself as divinity. He chooses to give up his life. Oftentimes we feel like things are happening to us and we're suffering. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the things that we choose to do, that we choose actively to suffer because of our faith. That is what discipleship is. It's the way of the cross, and it's hard. Which is exactly why Jesus, Jesus says, uh, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. It's the way of the cross. Nobody wants to do this. That's why it's so appealing when you see it, when you view it, and you go, oh, man, that looks so good. Look how humble that guy is over there. Man, he's so selfless. Man, I want to be like that. That's why, because it's so, so few and far between. There's a saying that I learned in, in seminary, that I find to be true, and it says this, we are justified alone and sanctified together. Justified alone and sanctified together. I shared about a month ago, as we, as we kind of wrap up here this morning, um, that at the beginning of the summer, I'm going to take my family up to the mountains of North Carolina, and we're going to do some hiking, and we're just going to enjoy God's country up there. I can't wait. It's going to be, it's going to be beautiful. But um, on, on our way hiking up the mountain, I'm going to let my kids go ahead of me. They can go ahead of me. It's okay. They're, they're safe. They can go up ahead of me. They're probably more motivated. They're probably not tired yet. And they're safe. I'll be underneath them. But on the way down, I'm going to make sure to go down ahead of them. And the reason why I'm going to go down ahead of them is because if they slip, I can catch them. We have to go down, though. In discipleship, we have to go down. Some of you feel like, I am justified before the Father. That's great. 
If you have claimed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and said, yes, I will, as we sang here this morning, you are justified. You are saved. You'll, you'll go to heaven. Whatever, however you understand eternal life, that is what will take place. But are you done yet? You're not done yet. There's two sides to this gospel, right? There's the justification, and then there's the sanctification. And if you feel like, man, I'm just stalled out in my faith, it's because the way forward is not just forward, it's down. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. That's, that's hard. That's hard. We, we, we had our kids do some uh, high ropes yesterday, and all three of our kids wanted to do a zip line sort of deal, and two of the three did it. It's hard. You're, you don't want to go like, you're stepping over and you're looking, and you're like, mm, I don't know about that. You know, your body goes, they're telling her, just go sit, sit down, and then you'll just go. Uh-uh. Your body's like, no, that's dumb. Right? That's the mind and the pattern of this world. The mind of Jesus goes, trust. I'm down here, but I'm at the cross. You're coming back up, but you've got to know that the way down is the way, is the way up. The way up is the way down. So friends, uh, I'm going to let God have the last word with this as we read uh, Philippians 2. Uh, right after this passage, it's in verse 13 and 14. He says this, or sorry, 12 and 13. He says, therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Justification looks like, yes, Jesus, I say yes to your yes. Sanctification, though, is a daily yes. And it means sometimes taking that downward path. It means working out your salvation. That is what it looks like to do this in this world. As our kids come in and as we close out worship, would you pray with me? Father, we give you thanks for your witness to us in this world, Lord. Um, that you not only have actively done what we could not do, that you justify us before the Father, that you do the work, you do the heavy lifting. You've done everything, and it is finished, to be clear, Lord. And yet at the same time, you call us to work out our salvation, to work as if we don't even have our salvation, that our salvation is attached to a relationship with you that is ongoing and morphing. And Lord, that it is the way forward is the way down. You have shown us that example in Christ Jesus that we might not only know Christ, but that we might seek to be more like Christ. That is our desire. That is the whole gospel. God, we give you thanks, and we pray that if anyone would receive this for the first time, that they would know Christ and know that they are found in Christ, that they claim the name Jesus Christ above all names, that every knee should bow that they are saved, that they are welcomed into the kingdom. And Lord, for the rest of us who feel like we are already called, we have already accepted that gift, God, that you would also allow us to take next steps. Next steps into humility, next steps into the downward path and say, not what I want, but I'm seeking what others want. I'm seeking what is going to bring the, the many to you, Lord. And so God, we just give you thanks for the opportunity to worship. And we pray this, all of this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Would you all stand as we close in our worship here this morning?
receive this blessing. As those who desire to know Christ, may we go from this place knowing his joy, knowing his resurrection, knowing his invitation to new life, knowing his sufferings, his passion. May we go from this place other-minded, taking on the mind of Christ everywhere we go this week. We pray this in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen, amen. Go in his peace. Have a blessed week.